By this our Constitution, which is to remain valid in perpetuity, we enact, determine, decree, and define, that if ever at any time it shall appear that the Roman Pontiff, prior to his promotion or elevation as Cardinal or Roman Pontiff, has deviated from the Catholic faith or fallen into some heresy, the promotion or elevation, even if it shall have been uncontested and by the unanimous assent of all the cardinals, shall be null, void, and worthless. It shall not be held as partially legitimate in any way. Those thus promoted or elevated shall be deprived automatically and without need of any further declaration of all dignity, position, honor, title, authority, office, and power. No one at all, therefore, may infringe this document. If anyone, however, should presume to attempt this, let him know that he is destined to incur the wrath of Almighty God and of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul. St. Antoninus, St. Robert Bellarmine, and St. Francis de Sales all teach that a heretic cannot be a valid pope. St. Robert Bellarmine, quote, A pope who is a manifest heretic automatically ceases to be pope and head, just as he ceases automatically to be a Christian and a member of the church, wherefore he can be judged and punished by the church. This is the teaching of all the ancient fathers, who teach that manifest heretics immediately lose all jurisdiction. St. Francis de Sales, Doctor of the Church, quote, Now when he, the Pope, is explicitly a heretic, he falls ipso facto from his dignity and out of the church. St. Antoninus, 1459, quote, In the case in which the Pope would become a heretic, he would find himself by that fact alone, and without any other sentence, separated from the church. A head separated from a body cannot, as long as it remains separated,